Don't let anybody know this, but right now I'm behind a pillar in a hallway ferociously munching on a granola bar like a wild cachorisu. I totally overslept this morning and missed breakfast, but that's only because I was creating the coolest flash mob dance ever known to mankind. Right, Seely? Or, or. The gym's been going well so far. Tangerine has really held her own. I think seely has been a good role model. The gym is harder than I thought. We've already gone through a whole bottle of Moo Moo milk, but we've got friends waiting out there in the stands, and we can totally do this! And hit, kick, yes, yes, snap it out and twist, pot boo ray wait, Pearl, you ride on Tangerine the Ponyta out into the arena, into the stadium area of this greenhouse gym. Hi, I'm Pearl! <laughs> you shout yeah, out everyone. to the meager crowd that is out there. Meager? <laughs> Again? What do I have to do? Flyers? <laughs> Call my peeps? Oh, everyone should know this is worth watching. <laughs> She does say that out loud. Oh my gosh. The, <laughs> the ones who were there are like, we get it. I know. You guys are loyal. We love watching gym battles. Well, it's a me thing. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> she takes a second and finds Strangle and Luca and Elmer in that crowd. It does not take you long to spot them up there in the stands. Great. Uh, as actually you see that Martin has gone over there and like handed Elmer up to Luca up there. So Luke is there with Strangle who gives a thumbs up like, Hello! Woohoo! Hi, Strangle! Hi, Button! Hi, Luca! Hi, Elmer! You see all your peeps. Did, <laughs> did you have any of your other Pokemon specifically out there watching? I think <gasps> your coconut's probably out there. Oh, definitely. I miss him. I miss Coco. Darla should watch. Darla needs to watch this. This is why we train Darla. Coco's over here like, take notes. Cool, so they're up there in the stands as well. That is teeny I would like out there, but I just feel like the way my brain is imagining these stands, she could slink into the in between part of the actual <laughs> stand, and then that would be a whole episode it'd be, it'd of getting be a her whole out. Ordeal, so, yeah. yeah, it'd be a whole ordeal. I don't think she would enjoy it as much as I think. Oh, can Oscar watch too? Oh, yeah. Cool. I'd say the Oscar and Beckers both probably. Right. Good. You know, being former gym competitors, I mean, still current, just not yeah. for this specific one. They wanted to root on the team because they were they were trying to give them guidance. Yeah, yesterday. they helped with the pep talk, all that jazz. Absolutely. They know the dance combo. They do, in fact, know the combo, and they were prepared to do the flash mob, and we're like, oh, guess we're not, guess we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but you ride the ponytail out into the arena. You you shout at the crowd. You wave hi to your friends, and do you get up onto the wooden platform? You know it. Nice. So you hop off of Tangerine, who then trots forth in front of your little platform as you get up to it and step up to the mic. You want it, like, right now? Yeah, like, just give them a message on your Pokey gear. Say, hey, what are you up to? Come on over and watch the battle. I'm very excited. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> if just one friend told another friend about this battle, think about how many people <laughs> listen to it. You know, word of mouth is really the most important <laughs> thing. <laughs> when you try to get... <laughs> people God. to listen or to watch a, a gym battle. Really, word of mouth is uh, totally where it's at, especially for an independent trainer like this who doesn't <laughs> do paid ads. I gotta buy all my own Tokyo equipment. <laughs> I rolled in 14. So you can subscribe to her Patreon. <laughs> and thank you to the crowd out there who gets it. <laughs> oh, hey, you also see the peaches out there in the crowd. Hi, Peach. Obviously. Of course, the crowd who gets it. And Jasper's there as well. He said he'd come watch. Friends. <laughs> so maybe not the, the rip-roaring crowd that Pearl always is after, but... <laughs> In her imagination, she always is going to search for it, guys. Oh Me, Sarah, I'm I'm more than content with this. Oh, my but gosh. But Pearl... So you were at the stand. And I rolled a you know, 14 yes. telling them these things. You see a couple of people have pulled out their pokey gears okay, and are, seem to be like texting people. Maybe a little less aggressive next time, but I got there. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep, keep workshopping it. I, I just hear, heard you say that because you did say it into the mic. Lucas shouts <laughs> from the crowd. <laughs> I 
Okay. Martin just gets up closer to his little old timey radio mic. You good? Oh yeah. All right, man. And Tangerine is still like sort of, uh, you know, nervously trotting back and forth in front of your little platform there. You see in the arena in front of you on this battlefield, there are a variety of plants and things sprouting out. The whole thing is not, uh, I would say, like difficult terrain, but there are certainly places strewn throughout this battlefield where there would be opportunities to try to hide or climb up or, you know, try to give yourself an advantage via all the plants and stuff. But Martin pulls the microphone a little closer and he says, uh, well, uh, all right. He's still got like a couple of mushrooms sort of just like hanging on, like one's on top of his head. One is like in his little overall pocket on the front. Uh, hello there, everyone. Um, he's still got stage fright. Well, uh, as you all can tell, I'm sure uh, we've got a new challenger here in the arena today. Pearl, a tier one trainer, will be facing off against our, our favorite gym leader, certainly my favorite, my... My, it's my emotional, gym. like, every time this is your day job, dude. <laughs> your gym leader and mine, my cousin Liam. <laughs> Keep going, but, like, oh, man, this is rough. <laughs> Can we get it recorded for you? Like, a pre-recorded? <laughs> oh, man, I'm just thinking for your interest. <laughs> do you enjoy this? <laughs> Does love make you do this? <laughs> No, I do it of my own volition. <laughs> I've been taking public speaking classes. Oh, okay. Well, now I feel okay. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> doing really good. <laughs> I'm really proud of you. Lamb walks out. Oh, he's out here. Yeah, he walks oh, onto I the stage. Oh, I can't it for Martin. Let him finish, please, I beg of you. That was just all Sarah. Oh, my Maybe gosh. Maybe a little Pearl. My cousin Liam. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Good job, Martin. <laughs> and Liam walks out from his little tunnel. And he walks up onto the platform. Once again, banjo in hand. And you see this older, wiry fella in these dirty overalls with this spiky, multicolored pastel mohawk. And he comes up to his microphone. He says, Well, I reckon I saw you out here yesterday, didn't I? Sure did. And she puts on a cowgirl hat from Ricky Jones. Goes, you ready? Oh, you know it. You know, thank you kindly for taking care of those pests for me. They do like causing mischief with my plants. <laughs> but that don't mean I'll be taking it easy on you. What an expectant. You know, he looks up in the stands and he says, you know, it seems like I've been giving some trouble to a few of the other trainers lately, so hope you're wearing your work boots, because you're in Liam's garden now. Roll initiative. Yeah. <laughs> it's old Liam. Gosh, Liam, you made me roll real bad there. <laughs> it was all a ruse. Yeah, that was all right. He's a little trickier than I thought. He really talks like this. <laughs> Hello, my name is Lem. It's short for Lemuel. I am the gym leader of Chanterelle City. Ha <laughs> ha. No, get the banjo back, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> With initiative rolled, Pearl has a six and Lem has a 16. Dang. Tangerine the Ponyta trots forth, her hooves going up and down anxiously with little sparks coming from them as Lim says, Oh, all right, then, Scyther, let's get it done. <laughs> and he throws out a Scyther. Whoa, a lot of blades. This large green bug with these scythe-like, knife-like hands flies up into the air. He says, Well, I reckon we'll get it started off right, going with a vacuum wave and a U turn. <laughs> going to be an unnatural 20 for the <laughs> vacuum wave. I guess so. Well, that is a natural one for the U-turn. Okay. You take four points of fighting damage from the vacuum wave, and the U-turn does miss as this fighting type move comes by. <laughs> the Scyther whooshes by with this burst of wind, and as it tries to get a hit in and then swoop back around, it does miss Tangerine the Ponytie. She is just like bucking up and down, and so woo, it misses, and then... <laughs> goes back into the Pokeball as Lim sends out a different Pokemon. What the heck? Immediately after the Scyther goes back to Lim, he sends out a Weeping Bell. What? Was that just for fun? You ain't never seen a U-turn before? No. Have you ever had a burger? Yep. With coleslaw on top? Yep. Okay. That's all I got. Well, I mostly have my cousin Martin's barbecue sandwiches. Those sound good. Do I get that perk when I become, uh, when I beat you? Can I get the U-turn? I don't know. <laughs> She's, like, kind of annoyed a little bit. 
<laughs> by all this, like, okay, I actually just want to hit you now. <laughs> all right, well, what is Tangerine going to do? Definitely Ember. All right, roll to hit. Definitely Ember, and we get plus two because she ate her X attack. Oh, yeah. 15 plus eight. That will hit. 10. 10. Double to 20 points of fire damage. Have you ever had a cookout before? Yep. That's what it's going to be, a regular old barbecue. Well, we going to see about that. It is then back to the weeping bell for its turn. As he says, well, go and try to get a little sleep better. I need Tangerine to make a constitution save. A natural 20. Weeping Bell is going to use one of its gym actions to cause disadvantage on that save. Wow, so I gotta go again? Yep. Wow. Oh no, 11. Tangerine tries to avoid this sleep powder, but it just keeps on pouring out of the mouth of this Weeping Bell. Weeping. Not cool, dude. As Tangerine falls asleep. Okay, what do I do? I just shake her up, wake her up? A sleeping creature can roll a d20 when subject to a move and at the end of each of its turns, ending the status immediately on a roll of 11 or higher. She's asleep for now. And I've rolled for how long it's going to be until Weeping Bell recharges that ability. Dang, okay. But that is the Weeping Bell's turn. It is now your turn. Tangerine, wake up! What you got on your sleep roll? Eight. Eight will not do it as Tangerine stays asleep. Left! <laughs> what the heck? Not cool. Ooh, uh, Pearl's getting angry. Pearl didn't want to get angry. I wanted to be friends with Lem. But now, now, Pearl, you know what? When the first thing she came up at, at the place, fire is in her eyes. We get a tight shot at her eyeball. She goes, Lem. <laughs> and there's fire. Well, they do say I'm a little tricky. Well, guess what? I'm not hearing you so that I don't say something mean to you, Lem. Hey, does a 15 hit Ponyta? Yeah. With advantage now that Tangerine uh, is asleep. Like a lie. Such a lie. She's not asleep. She's freaking wide awake. <laughs> that is such a lie. She is wide awake. And you know it, and I know it. These vines come forth from the weeping bell. Oh, yeah, sure it does. As it wraps up Tangerine. And she takes nine points of normal damage. Man, bug and grass. You just can't mess with them. Pearl, you notice something interesting. You know how the weeping bell is sort of like, you know, a big uh, sort of pitcher plant and it's got that big open mouth? There seems to be some sort of like black sludge on the inside that seems like it's sort of, you know, repairing some of those burn wounds steadily. Oh, no. <laughs> plant moves are so bad. Oh, gosh, they're so freaking hardy. It's your turn. Oh, man. Well, let me see if I wake up. 16. 16. So that's the end of your turn. You do wake up. That's all? It is at the end of your turn that you wake up. But go ahead and uh, make a strength save to uh, try to bust out since you did wake up. 17. 17, I whoa! Even, I didn't even add anything. That's how so ready Tangerine was for this and how she was ripped. She was, uh, the chance was ripped from her hooves. <laughs> She's not asleep. She is no longer asleep and That's she right. has uh, immediately just sort of like <laughs> gotten herself out of the wrapped condition. That's right. So that's going to take us back to Lim's turn as he says, well, I know about all that. And the Weeping Bell is going to attempt to wrap Tangerine once more. That's a natural two, though. With it. Well, it looks like you swung in a mix there, Lemmy. It would seem so. Your turn. Flame wheel. Ooh, deck save? Yeah. Well, that's a natural five. Yes. Oh, shoot. 14. Just barely hits. No, 14 damage. Just kidding. Keep it together, bro. <laughs> I am here and I am awake. And my horse is awake too. We've always been awake. I would like to say it was a trance, not a sleep. <laughs> to and, to uh, articulate how much of a whiff, like how, how befuddled and stolen that sleep was. It was not a true slumber. She never had a dream. Her eyes were wide open. <laughs> she slept with her eyes wide open like horse, horses do. Standing wide open. So 28 points of damage. It is 28 points of damage, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It is then Lem's turn once more. He says, all right, then, all right, all right. How about a little, hmm. You know what, let's try something else. And he switches back out to the Scyther. And the Scyther, as a bonus action, uses Vacuum Wave. It's a 15 to hit. It does. That is two points of fighting damage. 
It is your turn. All right, all right. Let's do Ember. All right, Ember, roll the hit. That's a 15. 15 just barely misses. Oh, I knew it. As Lim says, all right, then, Scyther, get in there. Do a little focus energy and a vacuum wave. As the Scyther hones its blades as it flies across for another vacuum wave attack. That is a 16 to hit. Uh, yep. That is six more points of fighting damage, and it is your turn. Ember. Roll to hit. 22. Hits. There we go. 10. Yes. 16. Ooh, 16, double to 32 points of fire damage. There we go, Tangerine. I knew you were made for this. Way to go, girl. <laughs> Don't give up. Did she try to hide? Is that beneficial at all? She's a flaming horse, and this thing can fly. So, I mean, aerial view, probably not working out for us. But I just want to ask because I know you gave me terrain. I would say that, yeah, because it's more fun. As a bonus action, if you want to try to use the terrain to your advantage somehow, she is on fire and uh, in the middle of the field. So, you know, it, it might be a higher DC. I just rolled a six, so. Great. She just kind of runs around a little bit. Yeah, she feels herself. Like, yeah. she's, she's like, yeah, I'm a strong horse and I'm awake. I'm very vigilant. It is then Lem's turn once again. As he says, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's go and uh, do another vacuum wave at a U-turn. I know what the U-turn is now. It's not diner talk. The vacuum wave is going to miss with a 12, but the U-turn hits with a 19. That is 15 points of bug damage as Scyther whew, once again goes back and the Weeping Bell comes back out. We're resistant against bug. You have it. Weeping Bell, welcome. Weeping Bell is out. It is your turn. Roll for an ember, a natural 20. Nice hits. That is nine points of damage. Nine double to 18 points of damage. That is your turn, and it is then the Weeping Bell's turn. All right, let's go for another little sleep out of there. I need Tangerine to make a con save at disadvantage. Okay. I rolled a 16, and then I rolled a 15. And I, those were straight rolls. Dang. Okay, cool. I told you she wasn't sleepy. We had a really good West Wing. In fact, we slept in them. We're good. We're good on the Z's. It's not what I heard. I'm just kidding. I just heard you were late. I got well rested, Lem. And I still look fabulous. <laughs> that is Weeping Bell's turn. Ooh, dang. He thought that was going to work. Okay, it is your turn. Let's do another Ember. Another Ember attack. Roll it. 15. 15 hits. Oh, great. Uh, 17. 17 doubled to 34 points of damage. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh well, goodness, goodness me, I do not like that. I do not like that. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm supposed to do here, dude. Hi, Elmer. <laughs> Hi, Coco. Hi, Dino. Why, what's he? You're like, Pearl just continues while he thinks about this next move. Say hey. hi to everybody in the big mic. <laughs> Ooh, you make me think bad. What? I know all your Pokemon now, Lem, and you only know one of mine. Hmm, fun. Hmm, aren't you a little something something? Hey! All right, that is his turn as he swaps out to the Cray Dilly. This oh, large- I really wanted to beat this thing. This large piranha plant uh, from Mario looking creature it has come like, out. It looks like a sock puppet to me. That's what I think of. <laughs> like a weird sock puppet. Well, you totally could make that a sock puppet, Oh, actually. yeah, it'd be a great sock puppet. Anyway, it's your turn. I would like to do a nature check on Cray Dilly. Mmm. Well, all righty then. What you trying to figure out? Weakness. What is weak to? Yeah. 18. Ooh, 18. That is enough. Looking at this thing, seeing and remembering the fight that Jasper had with it yesterday, and remembering sort of what worked and what didn't, you are aware of the fact that it is vulnerable to bug, steel, fighting, and ice. Ho, 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 Lem, I got a buddy that you have to meet. You don't know me if you don't know this pokey. Come on out, Seely. And we bring Seely out. I'll swap out. All right, so you use your action to swap out. Excellent. Really? I feel like you wouldn't have seen that one coming. Well, it certainly is interesting. Let's see what we can do here. All right, then. Craig Dilly, go on, do a little grass knot. Oof, that's only a 13. I don't think that hits, does it? No. That does not hit. But as a bonus action, he says, Well, while we're going to be here for a minute, you go ahead and ingrain. Get you some nutrients. As you see... Oh, you're getting stronger. The roots of this Craig Dilly come out and attach itself to the ground. That is his turn. It is your turn now. All right, Seely. Let's start off 
with just a healthy dose of dairy. Give it a blizzard. Ooh, nice. I'm gonna impose disadvantage because it is rooted to the ground, and I think that's fair. And that is a six. Ha. It's not because I want to take it easy on you. I just think that he literally just did have it root itself to the ground, and I think that it is a logical thing. Well, let the listeners be the judge, but I support it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 3d8. Yep. 14. All right, 14 is going to be double to 28 points of ice damage. With that, Lem says, all right, let's do a little something different. Great, Dilly, go on, try a little ass. So I need Seely to make a dexterity saving throw. She rolled well. 25. Ooh, wow, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. She'll only take half the amount. Oh, it was max damage on it, though. Wow. 13, but it's going to be halved to six points of poison damage. And you see the Cray Dilly sucking up some of those good nutrients. Nutrients. See the kind of things that tickles. <laughs> yeah, I know, Celie. I know you would like to play with this sock puppet, but we can't right now. It is then your turn once more. I want to do Signal Beam just to mess with Lem. Ooh, all right. Roll to hit. It was 11 plus 8, 19. 19 does hit. Thank you for the ability score bonus. Eight. Eight doubled to 16 points of super effective bug damage. He says, ooh, now that's a little fancy, isn't it? Oh, yeah. We like to keep things spicy over here in the pearl package. You can also call us the Cuddle Bunch. Tell your friends. And she looks out to the audience. <laughs> hashtag Cuddle Bunch. Let them know we were here. Yeah, you know, use hashtag Cuddle Bunch and also tag Tagging really is the best way for her to see the stuff you post. Oh, my gosh. And to guide folks directly to her. <laughs> you know what? That is for anyone who has ever skipped to the middle of an episode, which includes me. <gasps> I get it. Oh, my god. Only because I hear them live. That's fair. But I never actually, I normally no, never skip. That is your turn. It is then the Cray Diddley's turn once again as it tries you know the grass knot. Come on, sack puppet. It's a natural five. 13? No. Okay, that misses, and you do see more of them good nutrients coming up from the ground into its roots. All right, all right, and it is back to your turn. Let's do Ice Shard. Ice Shard, roll to hit. Woo! 16 plus 8. 16 plus 8. 24. Will hit. Um, five. Five points of ice damage? Yep. Double to 10. Now, come on now, Gray Dilly. We got to do a little something over here. Give it that action power. <laughs> that was funny how he just said that. 16 to hit? Yeah, that hit. There we go. There we go, Lamb. You made it. You made it on the blubbery babe. That is 19 points of rock damage. Mm. Does she resist that? I or do she resist vulnerable? rock. She resists it. Yeah. Seely's so surprised by that. Seely's like, or, or. Whoa. I know. You come at me like that? <laughs> I guess I didn't become a gym leader for nothing, huh? You step to this. <laughs> and the roots do suck out the last little bit of nutrients from that spot as they come out of the ground. It is then your turn. Don't hold back, Steely. Blizzard. Not a disadvantage. Still a natural three, though. Whoa. So that's cool. That's cool. It's cool. It's cool, Craw Daddy. You're just a little sock puppet. Wow, if it helps, I rolled two ones. Oh. Ooh. But I rolled a seven, so 15. All right, 15 doubled to 30 points of ice damage. He says, well, now, I do not know. I do not know about all that business over there. I'm not a big fan of that at all. Where can I catch a sock puppet like this? Oh, round. <laughs> That's a trade secret. Oh, I reckon he's going to take a gamble is what he's going to do. As he once again tells the Cray Dilly to move a little bit over to the left. There's more nutrients over there. As the Cray Dilly plants itself over near a little berry tree. I'm not going to make the same mistake again. And then tries to use another ancient power. That is an unnatural 20. That is 16 points of rock damage. Half. Yep. And he's going to get some nutrients. Uh, mistake made. I'm doing Blizzard since now I know. All right. I remember it, AKA. Another Blizzard. Well, dead gum. Oh, wow, though. 18 on the save for the Blizzard. At disadvantage? It rolled the same t both times, Dang. and it wasn't All right, bad. That makes, that makes. All right, so it's halved. Yeah. 12. 12. Halved and then doubled. 12. 
as the sock puppet ducks its head behind the berry tree and uh, avoids the brunt of the blast. Alrighty. The sock puppet head pokes out of the other side of the tree and then spits out some acid. Please oh, not do it. The deck save. Um, I rolled a 15 plus nine. You yeah, succeed on the deck <laughs> save. <laughs> Wasn't bad on the damage that time either. It's going to be 11 halved poison damage. And as it is wont to do, that Cray Dilly absorbs some nutrients. Get you feeling good like you're attached to the earth, you know. See, like, don't give up. You're attached to the sky and the sea and precipitation. Oh, no. Yeah, water effect chain. That's just science. <laughs> it is your turn. Let's do signal beam. Okay, another signal beam. Roll a hit. Natural 20. Oh. Yes, I knew she had it in her. Well, dadgum. Woo! 13. 13 double to 26 points of damage. And that is your turn. Then comes back up to Lim. He says, all right, well, kind of stuck here for now. So let's just go for one more ancient power. Natural one. Natural one so for the Cray Dilly. I'm so sorry. Oof. It just gets, like, rocked back by that signal beam. And I think it's just sort of, you know, it's kind of like a jack-in-the-box. This is like, just kind of jiggling back and forth. And so it just, like, overcommits on throwing those rocks forward with the ancient power, and it does miss. Oh, wow. (laughs) Oof. You hate to see it, but it gets some nutrients. And then the roots get sucked back up. The Cray Dilly is not looking too hot. Okay, that's right. That's right. Your turn. Signal beam. All right, another signal beam roll to hit. Oh, missed it. That's a three. As that misses, he says, all right, Cray Dilly, come on back. Come on back for a little bit. Uh, Scyther, get up back there. And Scyther comes out and does another vacuum wave attack. As Seely takes six, I believe double to 12 points of fighting damage. Scyther! That was really cool. That was tricky, Lem. It is now Seely's turn once again. We're swapping out. You're swapping out. Who are you swapping to? I'm really struggling right now because I want Dwayne to be a part of this, but also I think I would rob Fanta if I don't get Fanta in here. So I'm I'm putting Fanta in the game. Hey, let him out to make it creamed corn. And I bring out my chick. Fanta. That's why get on your feet, folks. Get on your feet. It's the fire chick. With your passive perception, you do note that some other people who weren't in this arena earlier have yes. come in here. Yes, that's the goal. Yeah, you came to see the show. We're giving it to you. As soon as you say came to see the show, Fanta's like, ow, and starts doing a little, like, flat ball change. That's right. I I also do it on the stage a little bit. A little jazz square. He was ready. He's ready. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. He starts doing the flash mob choreography, even though he's a flash mob of one. Love. But that is your turn. Lim says, all right, right, well, let's let's make make things a little interesting. Focus energy and a wing attack. Goodness gracious. That's a natural one I'm for wing attack. so sorry. Oof. That is Lamb's turn. As the scyther does focus on honing its blades even more. Shing, shing. But it is not able to do its thing. Flame charge. I'm very excited. I feel like it's been forever. I'm like miss playing with Fanta. I know. I only rolled an eight, but guess what? It's plus 10, 18. Goodness gracious. Yep, that <laughs> hits. Oh, wow, I miss playing with Fanta. I don't have enough D8s. I need another one. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I just rolled real hot on them dice. 29, 30. And I, just for the heck of it, would like to add my battle dice to this one. Sure. 35. 35. Double to... Oh, my gosh, please. Yes, after I hyped you <coughs> up. <laughs> uh, 70 points of damage. <laughs> Uh, 70 points is enough uh, with this flame charge. Yes! Stop! Yes, chickadee! Come on, say the sweet words. I think that Fanta just leaves like burned tire tracks just in the earth behind him with this flame charge. Is he like full on road runner? Like, (laughs) comes in and absolutely (laughs) annihilates this scyther. Oh my gosh, that was so awesome. Goodness gracious. Wow, did I mention I miss playing with Fanta? How does the crowd react? I think that there is like a silence for a moment as there are just like streaks of flame in in this garden arena. Can Elmer start the clap? And then Elmer. And then. (laughs) Tiny, tiny little claps from Elmer. 
<laughs> Luca. <laughs> Luca and Toadstool are like, yeah! <laughs> yeah! And then the rest of the crowd erupts into a big cheer. That was amazing. Oh my oh, gosh. That was awesome. Uh, cool, cool. So he says, well, <laughs> and he brings the scyther back and it's Pokeball. He says, go, Weeping <laughs> Bell. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool. cool. cool, dude. Well, then we can go ahead and do a little toxic. I need Fanta to make a constitution save at disadvantage. It's going to be a 17. A 17 at disadvantage? Yeah, I got plus seven. Oh. Yeah. 17 is going to save as Lim says, well, that <laughs> dumb. Are you sure? Yeah, when I say I'm a level 100 trainer, I'm not joking. Something about the system is rigged. Martin, did you write down the wrong... T- do I, did I get the wrong Pokeballs? <laughs> Martin? I mean, I just have one bag, but I'm ready for more. Goodness gracious. Well, all right. <laughs> it is Fanta's turn. Ooh, he was trying to get you with that toxic. I know he was. But you know what? I, had, I gave Fanta the Lumberry. So I wasn't scared. Dang, you right. Yeah. That, I mean, to, in, in my cred, I was trying to be a prepared player. Um, okay, let's do peck. Okay, going for a peck. Just because I can't do another fire thing after that amazing moment in life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 21. 21 does hit, yes. 13. 13 double to 26 points of damage is going to be enough. With a peck, Fanta runs up to this weeping bell and pack. <laughs> I actually didn't know we were that close. KO's the weeping bell. <gasps> Pearl herself is a little stunned. I did not realize, Sarah, I did not realize we were that close. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> he got, got a little low on health and he switched him out to try to get one last shot at a status condition. And well, you know, sometimes things just don't go the way you want them to. That's lunch, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your friends. They should come to my next battle. As the weeping bell goes down, Lim says, I tell you what. What? We can make this a little more interesting. I got one more Pokemon I could throw out there. I'll give you an extra TM if you beat it too. Please, Lem, I'm dying over here. Make it worth my while. <laughs> Prove to me that you deserve to be on that other side with that banjo. Hey. Come at me, bro. And does the crowd get really hyped at this too? Oh yeah. With that, Lem says, well, okie dokie then, let's have some fun. And he throws out a Venomoth. All right. And as the Venomoth comes out, it is going to force Fanta to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, wow. We have negative one on wisdom. That's a 12. A 12 will not succeed on that mm. save as Fanta takes 15 double to 30 points of psychic damage Whoa. from a side beam. All right. There we go. All right. Not holding back, Fanta. Let's party! Woo! Fanta is confused. Can I eat the lum? At the beginning of his turn, yeah, he yeah. can eat that lumberry and uh, remove that status condition. Yep. Great. All right, he is uh, not confused. Cool, that was fun. Fanta's confused in the sense of, I won the gym, right, Pearl? Like, <laughs> That's no, it, you, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you won, I promise. Now this is just for fun, Fanta. Ah! I know, it doesn't make sense, but Lem wants to. <laughs> All right, we're going to do flame charge. Roll to hit. Um, 17. A 17 does hit, yes. I'm going to add one of my uh, trainer dice. Okay. 15 plus 8. oof a doof All right, 23, double to 46 points of fire damage from the flame charge. Good job, Fanta. Good job. Ah! As once again, even though this Pokemon is coming in fresh, like no damage or anything like that, uh, Fanta still, I mean... He quickly KO'd the two Pokemon who were already damaged, you know, a, a good chunk each. But this one coming in fresh already looks real bad. Well, and two, I mean, Venomoth definitely took a good chunk out of us. Yeah. So as Fanta makes contact with the Flame Charge, I need him to make a constitution save. Ooh, he failed, guys. 13. A 13. Now he's poisoned. All right. And then on the Venomoth's turn, I need for Fanta to make a, another wisdom save. 12. 12 is a failure as the side beam takes hold once again. These waves of psychic energy come from the Venomoth right at Fanta, and that is going to be 13 double to 26 points of psychic damage. Ooh. All right, learning about my strengths, learning about my weaknesses. <laughs> it is now your turn once again, and Fanta's poisoned. 
pearl um, looks to Lem. Hey, Lem. Yeah. Since this one's for Fonzie, are you okay if I show you a really cool Pokemon that I have? I mean, you do you. I still got Grey Dilly. What? I still got Grey Dilly. It's not, it's not KO'd yet. What? Yeah. I have a what? Not yet. But wait, I won the gym, right? I mean, you still haven't beat me. Oh, my gosh. Lem, you're a little sneaky Santa. Me? Yeah. I would not. You spend your action to swap out Fanta to Dwayne the Crystal Onyx, who just towers over everything and everyone in this stadium with a Onyx, with his cool, like, medieval helmet barding thing. Yes, that's awesome. He glimmers in the light <laughs> coming through the greenhouse roof. That is your turn. Well, well back up. Uh, Silver Silverwind. That is a 16 total? AC 17. AC 17. The silver wind misses as the Venomoth starts flapping its wings, <laughs> trying to use this bug type move on Dwayne. But he's big and made of rocks, so the, the breeze does not seem to do too much. It is your turn. Let's do Rock Tomb. Well, I got news for you. It doesn't have a great bonus to its strength. I have a feeling, again, strengths and weaknesses, what I'm learning. It is a, bu uh, it is a bug. That is a 13. Uh, misses. Roll your damage. Oh, yes. I just rolled two eights. Ooh. I'm going to add a hit dice. Oh, yeah, buddy. 16 plus 5 is 21 plus 6, 27. 27 points of damage KOs the Venomoth. Yes, dude. Oof. Again, the crowd stunned silence, and Elmer's the only one clapping. Well, there are just these, like, crystalline rocks that boom, 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 come forth from the ground. There's almost a triangle of them that come up and, like, pin this moth in them as it takes the rock damage and is KO'd. No more status conditions. Okay, cool, cool. Good agreement. I need for Dwayne to make a constitution saving throw. Aw, <laughs> dang. Wow. That's a uh, 20, uh, uh, yeah. 3. Oh, yeah, he's, he's fine. Great. He's made of rocks. He got his new little metal armor on now. The poisonous powder that <laughs> off of the Venomoth as it was KO'd doesn't do anything. Cool. And out comes Cray Dilly. Out comes Stealth Rock. Oh, dang, reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hoogie. 18. Hits. 11. 11 points of damage. All right. Lim says, all right, let's keep it interesting. Cray Dilly, go ahead and in grain, get your nutrients. Do a little grass knot. Get a little knot. <laughs> Get a little oh. bedhead. Oh, it was a natural three for grass knot. Oh, gosh. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, Craig Dilly. Craig Dilly. Craig Dilly. Get your nutrients. Oof, the doof. All right. That is its turn. It is uh, your turn now. I would like to rage. Okay. And rock throw. Rage and use rock throw. All right. Duane goes into a rage and then uses rock throw. 19. 19? Yeah. 19 points of damage does not feel too good as the Cray Dilly is once again like rocking back and forth and it seems like it would have gotten knocked back a bit, but it's only the roots holding it in uh, as it tries for another grass knot. There we go. That one's a natural 19. All right. Come on, Dwayne. You're a strong boy. And grass knot is going to double the dice roll for the damage as Dwayne is uh, size large or bigger. I'm technically huge, actually. Yep. <laughs> Seven on the dice, double to 14, plus three, 17 is going to be doubled again to 34 points of grass damage from the grass knot. All right, all right. There we go, Craig Daly. Now I know why you're at this gym. And it sucks up more of those nutrients from the ground next to another berry tree that it has planted itself near. It is then Dwayne's turn. Let's try Rock Tomb. A 15? Ah, dang, that is the DC. 13. 13, half to seven points of damage. Great, that is your turn. As Cray Dilly is still ingrained into the ground, seeing that that seemed to do something, Lim calls out for another grass knot. Stay shiny, Dwayne. Don't get afraid. Oh, that's a natural four, though. That's definitely not going to hit, as it sucks up more of the nutrients from the rich soil beneath. It is your turn. Dwayne, look at all these rocks. Come on. Get your nutrients. Rock throw. Roll the hit. 14. 14 misses. Ugh. Then he gets distracted by the rocks. He pulls an AA run. I know. You say, look at the rocks. And he's like, oh, no. He's like, I love the rocks. 
Ah, natural two for Grass Knot. Oh, man. And he gets his nutrients. <laughs> Dwayne, do you see one that you like now? Would you rock her? On the Natural 20. Oh, okay. Wow, I am so thrilled right now. I'm going to add another uh, hit dice, too. Another battle dice. Yeah. 24. 24 total points of rock damage from the critical hit. Come on, Dwayne! No, it stands and just goes, Dwayne, 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 Dwayne,
She's beauty and she's grace. <laughs> As George Foreman daintily flies out of the Pokeball. Also, I normally wouldn't call Georgie my closer, but you know, it's okay. I, don't, I was like, oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, nah, I, I don't consider Georgie my absolute closer, but in this moment, I just kind of wanted to surprise him with one more. <laughs> That's like super strong. Fair enough. It is your turn. Fell Stinger. Fell Stinger rolled a hit. That was two. <laughs> two on the die. Yeah, di- ten. Ten does miss, and he's like, well, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. She got busy twirling. <laughs> showing off to the crowd. Yep. Oh, absolutely. And as she's showing off to the crowd, the Cray Dilly finds a new spot to ingrain itself and goes to use ancient power. That's a natural 17. Ooh, low rolls on it, though. That's 11 double to 22 points of rock damage. As you see those good nutrients coming up through the earth. As it's in a fresh spot near a berry tree. Let's do Destiny Bond, just in, as a safety. Okay, just as a safety, you're going to do Destiny Bond? Yeah. Okay. Oof. Tell you what, this plant, not a lot of wisdom. That's an eight. Nah. Yeah. Okay, Destiny Bond has been cast. Great. You cast Destiny Bond as your action. The Cray Dilly then goes for another ancient power attack. That was hey. a natural 18. Cray Dilly. Cray Dilly. You s- Oof. You crazy little sock puppet, you. Wow, the same amount of damage, though. Three into one on those D8s. That is going to be another 22 points of super effective rock damage. Fellstinger? Fellstinger rolled a hit. No! I'm rolling so badly now, guys. Uh, That was a three plus eight. Three plus eight, 11, not going to hit. Dang it. George does have leftovers, though, so I do get a little health back. Nice, yeah, add your three hit points back. And with its last ancient power... That is a unnatural 20 to hit. Oh, man. 21, double to 42 points of rock damage. Oh, my gosh. Does that take her down? No. Oh, wow. But, whoa, this got very different. And it is then your turn. Pearl doesn't want to show that she's sweating, but she is sweating. So that's up to Lem to perceive. Mm -hmm. But she's like, all right, Georgie, come on. You're okay. Um, Another fell stinger. Thank you. Uh, Unnatural 20. That hits. Oh, yes, I rolled high. He did ask if you wanted to make it interesting. 18. Oh, I am feeling the party. 18 doubled to 36 points of super effective bug damage. And she just points to Cray Dilly, and I hope you are too. The sock puppet gets (laughs) knocked back by that big fell stinger attack. And all of the HP that it looked like it was regaining, uh, it gets knocked back down a whole lot. Nice. And it's looking bad once again. I take leftovers. Okay, yeah, you get your leftovers back. Ooh. Well, shoot, I was hoping we'd get it on that last one, but that's all right. Use Brian. I have never heard of that. Well, you still have it, because that's only an 11 to hit. <laughs> Natural three. Beautiful. All right, Fell Stinger. Uh, 16 plus eight. That hits. 12 points is damage. 12 doubled to 24 points of bug damage. It had 24 oh hit points gosh. remaining. Oh exactly 24. Woohoo! How does Georgie do it? Georgie gives a fabulous spin and whips out into a disco thrust and just with that single bling, the stinger comes out and lands right on Cray Dilly's imaginary nose. It wants <laughs> to give it a nose. If there was a nose on this sock puppet, it would be booped, but very sharply and painfully by this fell stinger. As Georgie puts it right in there, pulls it out, and you see actually in what looks like the mouth, what must have actually been the eyes, these two sort of yellow orby looking things that are in the sides. If it could go cross-eyed, it did, as the Cray Dilly is knocked out. Yes! You have defeated Lim, the Chanterelle City gym leader. Woohoo! As he calls the Cray Dilly back, he says, Well, that was not too shabby. Yeah, I got all of yours fainted and only one of mine down. <laughs> Tell your friends. <laughs> Make another persuasion check for the crowd. An advantage. Oh, thank you. That is an unnatural 20. Unnatural 20. The crowd is loving it. Woohoo! Once again, Luca and Toadstool are leading the chant of like, Pearl, 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 Pearl. I put all of my pokies out and I give them the biggest hug ever. We all have a big old group hug. We did 
it, you guys. Great job. You let everybody out of their Pokeballs, and Dwayne, though dazed, is aware enough of the situation to just give a weak, like, onyx a victory as he kind of curls up around the rest of y'all. Mm-hmm. But Seely, Fanta, Tangerine, and George Foreman are all ecstatic, and Tangerine looks so, like, confident and happy right now. Seely and Fanta, the old veterans, along with George Foreman, really, all of those core Cuddle Bunch crew have a look of, you know, we knew we could do it, but seeing how excited Tangerine is, they they love it, and Dwayne is just, you know, he's a little cross-eyed, but he's happy to be there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so sweet. And as the applause from the audience continues, Martin comes up to you. Well, say we. Yes, this is the best part. All right. I hop on Tangerine. You do. You hop on Tangerine to ride out. You get everybody else back in the Pokeballs. And you. See you soon, Elmer. And you head into the tunnel with Lim. Good luck, Luca. Go get him. Thanks, Pearl. And you head to the winner's room. friends jonah here to say thank you for listening to postcards from pearl i'd like to take a moment to tell you about our incredible partner dice envy they've gotten a bunch of favorites restocked recently so if you've wanted to get your hands on a set like liches get riches or core hanabi quitty or any others but they were out of stock now is your chance my friend if you're looking to add to your dice hoard, you can get 10% off of your purchase at Dice Envy by going to DiceEnvy.com slash QuestCo or by using promo code QuestCo at checkout. That's Q-U-E-S-T-C-O for 10% off of your entire order. If you're a fan of what we do here on Quest Company Junior and you would like to give us a boost, please go over to our page on the Apple Podcasts app or wherever you listen to your podcast and leave us a rating and review. It is a huge help to us, and we read every review that comes in. We got to keep feeding the algorithm those good, good five-star reviews. And if you really love what we do here at Quest Company Junior and you would like to take that next step in supporting us, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. For as little as $2 a month, you can help us with necessary expenses, help us continue to improve the quality of the show, and get access to exclusive content and patron rewards. If you'd like to give us that support, you could do so at patreon.com slash Podcast. And if you've been a fan of the show for a while and you just haven't gotten around to becoming a patron yet, we've got a little something special for you. Now through Valentine's Day, which is coming up, you can shoot us an email with your name and mailing address and we will send you a postcard from Pearl so that you can see what it's like being a patron at the Ace Trainer level or higher. Those emails can be sent to questcompanypodcast at gmail.com. We are very, very thankful for all of y'all, and Pearl would love to say hello. You can find the link to the Patreon over on our website, questcompanyjunior.com. If you'd like to contact us, you could do so directly through our website or by finding us on Instagram and Twitter at questcojunior. You can also hang out with us in our Quest Company Discord. The link to that is on our website and Twitter. We know that word of mouth is the best way to get people listening to a new podcast, and that's especially true for independent shows like ours. So we would love to see you posting about the podcast and telling your friends about us. If we see you tweeting about us or posting fan art using hashtag Junior or hashtag postcards from Pearl, you might get a character named after you on the show. And if you have fan art of the podcast that you want to share, just make sure when you post it to tag us so that we can see it. Quest Company Jr. is a proud member of Podicon Go, a group of independent podcasts supporting high-quality content that's fun for the whole family. Podicon Go is your reliable corner of the internet for the kind of podcasts that everyone can enjoy, with shows ranging from animal facts to stories to audio dramas to RPG actual plays and more. Check them out at podicongo.com. I'd like to take a moment to thank the amazing artists whose music is featured in this episode. Thank you to Fool Boy Media for the song Video Game Land. 
Thank you to Braxton Burks and Materia Collective for the song Pokemon Gym, Kanto, and Johto versions. Thank you to Fluid Volt for the song Smiling Sigh and Shall We. Thank you to Michael and Game Chops for Pokemon League, and thanks to Silent Partner for Swamp Stomp. And thank you to TabletopAudio.com for providing the ambient sounds. That's all for me, so let's see what Pearl's up to now that she's won her second gym badge. Thank you for joining us here at Quest Company Jr. Hello everyone and welcome to Pokepology 251. In this course, we will be taking a deep dive into the history of the Keepers, the organization that eventually became the Pokemon Rangers of today. We will specifically be looking at- Hey professor, I'm here. Sorry I'm late. Steely, come on! Order! Oh, uh, hello Pearl, I didn't expect you to make it. Yeah man, I'm an adjunct. No, you're auditing. Right. Well, as I was saying, we will specifically be following the story of two Keeper initiates, Virgil and Jaquees. Well, first of all, I can sometimes hear thoughts. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And second of all, I can talk to Pokemans. I'm 12! Huh, I think I've seen those guys in a museum or something. Yes, they did become very powerful Pokemon trainers, but before they accomplished any great feats or saved anyone, they were just a couple of boys. (laughs) Pandora walks up to you. The both of you <laughs> weeping. We got attacked by birds and bunnies. It was bad. Very frightened boys. Why were they so scared? Well, it was a scary world. The tall grass was much more dangerous than it is today. It's the buffest bu- buffer free I've ever seen. I also didn't realize it's prison bandana on its head. <laughs> it's swearing. Oh, it's, it's got a teardrop tattoo, <laughs> and you know what that means. It's a teardrop tattoo. This is not good. This is really not good. I don't know. I feel like we can take them. Trainers were not common because Pokeballs had just been invented. It's kind of disturbing. Oh, God. Is it okay? Um, it's so big and it went in the small ball. And to the average person, Pokemon trainers were pretty intense. <laughs> day one, and there's a barbarian woman with a hound doom, one of the scariest Pokemon for a child to meet. Wow, Seely, I had no idea. Or, or. Well, there's no time like the present to learn about the past, so settle in. This is so much cooler than boating school. Kinoko Origins is a spin-off of Postcards from Pearl on Quest Company Jr. You can check it out as one of the many offerings on the main Quest Company podcast feed. Give it a listen wherever you get your podcasts and learn more at questcompanypodcast.com. We want to start a, a small business together? We should make it a team. A team that could, like, uh, travel to the stars. Like, like, like team, uh, Yeah, like, uh, how would you get to the stars? Uh, catapult. Uh, like, uh, team Catapult. Team Catapult. Yeah! Got you got a pull. Let's go the heck home. water with some lemon, am I right, Lem? Yeah, that is good. It was a great battle. That was so much fun. You know, that was excellent. I, like I said, I, I have been uh, having a, a, well, not a streak, but there have been some trainers who've come in here as of late, and we've, we've been a little tricky. We've had I, given a little trouble. I have a shroomish, and whoa, let me tell you, that dude is a tank from, like, level two. He could just stay fighting forever and ever. So I was actually really, I was like, whoa, coming into this, I knew you would have one life sucker or two or three or your whole team were just going to be life suckers. Ah, well, you were right, I do suppose. 
<laughs> um, but hey, Martin's really cool. Also, this couch is super fluffy. Hey, can I have this? And she uh, looks at a coaster. <laughs> yeah, we got plenty of them coasters. Yay! That coaster. Martin says, yep, they're commemorative. <laughs> I really like this. This is, this is nice. Also, the, the greenhouse was so nice. I thought your Pokemon were really kind. That's not the usual gym fare. So I really appreciate that. Normally, it's just like, psych you out type stuff. Or at least that's kind of what I experienced at the bulletin. Hey, can I have your Pokegear number? Also, I really, really liked your Bellsprout. That was cool. And Scyther. Whoa, so many scissors. Oh, yeah. Okay, just you can put your number right in here. <laughs> He's like, what you want my number for? Um, just in case. I'm battling forces of evil. Oh, well, that's exciting. Have you ever heard of Team Nasty? Insight check. <laughs> Go ahead and roll insight. Oh, dang it, this was just like it with, um. <laughs> with Mortimer? Man, this was just like it with Mortimer. <laughs> Girl can't read it. She looks up to them all so much. Oh my gosh. Six. Well, I think I might have heard a little something here and there. Uh, there's some kind of news story about something that happened across the lake a little while back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty weird. But look at this. She shows him her metal arm. Oh, you show the snag machine. Yeah. Oh, he's like, whoa, well, that looks like some sort of fancy contraption. Yeah, she pulls it back up. So, you know, if you give me your number, I can, um, you could help maybe one day. And, um, you know, we j I'm just here trying to protect pokies. Well, I ain't got a, uh, a poke gear or nothing, but I can give you my house number. Sure, that works. Yeah, that's great. Also, I'll take Martin's, too. I'll just use the, the front desk number. Guys, what if I need you quicker than this? Like, what if you're away? Well, I'm usually here. I'm here. I'm in my garden. Okay, okay, okay. I'll take him. I'll take him. She writes him down. <laughs> hey, you write down the number of just like Lem's home phone and just the receptionist desk here. That's very good. Um, Martin, do you ever talk to Karen over at Bullet? Well, you know, I've gotten a call from her here and there. She's all right. She's a nice lady. Isn't she, though? Also, I should mention that as you are here in, in the winner's room, it does very much feel like what I would assume the sort of green room situation would be at a, a grand old Opry kind of yeah, situation. that's exactly what I'm imagining. Various uh, mandolins and banjos and dulcimers and things of that nature, you know, on cases and uh, in things in the walls. There is definitely a very uh, rustic aesthetic in here. Being a person who's gotten to be behind the Grand Ole Opry and work an event there, I, I attest to that. Hey. hey. But yes, you are enjoying your time in here, just hanging out for a little bit. I pull out Seely. We we eat some snacks. It's oh, fun. Oh, 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 oh. So tell me, um, what's your favorite Pokemon, Mom? It's hard to pick favorites. I do love my grass types, though. You know, bug types can be a little tricky, too, and they're a little fun. But I do personally love my grass types because I do love to garden. When did you start battling and training? Well, Dadgum, it was a while ago. I, I've been a trainer for a long time. Like a kid? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, a, a number of years that I do not care to mention. <laughs> oh, interesting. Um... Don't let the pastels fool you. <laughs> Per would like to try to figure out how old she, he is. Okay, make another insight check. Separate from your first one. Cause 19, this is... where were you on the big question? <laughs> <laughs> he looks older than like Lewis and Ron. And, okay, you know, that, she's that just sort of noticing crew. that now. Maybe a little closer to slash maybe a little over Ricky Jones. Um. Okay, what is like your top favorite thing to do in Chanterelle City? What do you highly recommend? Ooh, well, that is a great question. Well, my personal favorite thing to do around here probably go over to the canyon because I do like being out in the nature and whatnot. I was over there yesterday. It was so much fun. Oh, well, that is I caught wonderful. a pan cham. Oh, really? I named it Jackie Cham. Well, that is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I really like Lem. Pearl really likes Lem. She wants him to know that she really likes him. Nice. Hey, hey Lem, I really like you. Oh, well, I think, you, I think you're something pretty special. I mean, now do tell, how long have you been walking around with one gym badge? Way too long. <laughs> I mean, man, the amount of looks I get, and I'm like, I'm a serious trainer. I train really hard. I just had a lot of other things to do. Like, again, it goes back to the defeating forces of darkness, and she shows the metal alarm. Clink! And it springs back up. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yep. yep. Hey, 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 Len. Yep. If you ever see people who look like this, and she, you know, gives them, Seely draws a little sketch real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta call me, okay? What? Like, it's not a joke. They're uh, not good people. I'll give you a call. Okay. 
<laughs> I make sure they have my Pokey number. You do. And he says, well, also, to, to answer your other question, uh, you know, the canyon is my favorite thing around here, but if you specifically ask about in town, uh, I do think the temple's pretty interesting. Oh, okay, yeah. I wasn't actually going to go there, but now I will. It's pretty historical. Okay. Cool. I don't know if you're into history and whatnot. But... Uh, I can be. I've been known to change into some glasses for the fun of it. <laughs> I mean, but besides that, I mean, obviously, the, the mall's a pretty big tourist attraction. You know, lots of different shops and things there. And, you know, planetarium, library, zoo, that's all good stuff. But, uh, but yeah, I am a man who enjoys the historical, so uh, the temple's not too shabby. Nice. Good, good. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh... No, I re- say it's not so! <laughs> it's not time. It's not time, is it? Yeah, it's it's re- going to be wait, close wait. to that time, <gasps> probably. We got Who another... Hmm? Who what? is it? Who's who's going up? Well, looks like uh, it's uh, Luca who's <gasps> supposed to be. I mean... I can't miss a single moment! Well, he's a... Uh, I gotta get really good seats. I gotta go let him... I was actually... I kind of got caught up in the moment here, he, See, here in this whole conversation. But, uh, you know, I was about to go let him in to uh, do the little garden task. And oh, then, great. Okay, we'll have enough time to make a poster. Well, you know, I probably should have been over there about five minutes ago to let him in, but uh, it's all right. He's just waiting for a second. Your He'll coleslaw's delicious. Blame it on that. Well, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but Martin actually leaves, remembering that he has an actual job to do to go let Luca in. <laughs> Valid. Well, I suppose while you're in here, I should give you what you came here to get, and he hands over the bluegrass bag. feel so right now. Thanks. You are mighty welcome. And also your other winnings. Also, don't don't tell anybody else. I mean, I know that there were a bunch of witnesses because, you know, the stadium. But uh, I was technically only supposed to use three, but you seem to be doing all right. So I figured I'd bump it up a little oh, bit. Oh, no, I was totally on board with you. I think it's one of those things you had to be there kind of a thing. Like anybody who saw that battle was like, yeah, 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 that was the right call. That combustion of yours uh, sure is something. I mean, uh, the He's whole really team. special. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the other things you came here to get, he hands over five thousand Poke dollars. Whoa! I forgot there was cash. <laughs> Woohoo! Steely, we're eating a steak dinner tonight. Oh no no! What is steak? We'll figure it out. Do not worry about it. <laughs> you know how previously there was. Um, money for beating the gym trainers and then money for the gym leader. This was technically 2000 for the pest control task uh, of cleaning up the garden and then 3000 for, for beating lamb. Oh, wow. I am so excited. I, for, I generally, for once, Pearl did it for the love of the game. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he also hands over the TMs for U-turn, X-scissor, and grass knot. Whoa. So when you break the rules, you really make sure you pay, for, pay up for it. I'm excited about u turn. Yeah, that is a fun one. Uh, you can get into a little mischief with that. He says, yeah, I didn't even really get to bust out X scissors as much as I wanted as uh, Scyther was uh, a little preoccupied. That's fitting it nicely, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, normally I don't dole out the U-turn, but, you know, we made a little in-battle bargain, so why not? I think it's worth it. Thanks so much, Len. Well, you are quite welcome. Well, I reckon I should uh, get my old team ready and uh, make sure I'm prepared for... Uh, you said it's your friend who's going to be out there? Yeah, Luca, you're going to love it. It's going to be a great battle. Well, and all he, right. Yeah. He's going to beat your butt. <laughs> well. Oh, have fun, Lem. I really like your um, gym. Well, thank you kindly, Pearl. It was nice to meet you. <laughs> Can I make my poster in here? Oh, oh, you know what? Nope, we just spilled glitter. I'm sorry. We're going to make it in the stands. Yeah, we're, we'll yeah. Sweep go that on up. out there. Go on out there. Don't make, a, don't make a mess in my green room. Okay, my bad. Seely. Or we or use or. glitter sticks. Or or. When, we're on, when we're traveling, we can't use the big tubes of glitter. Or or. Or 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 or. Okay, I told you this. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm really proud of you. Or or. I give her a big hug. You give her a big hug, and y'all head back out toward the stands to see what happens in Luca's battle. Come on, Luca. And that's where we'll stop this one. Woohoo! You've got another badge! Oh, thank goodness! Yay! I'm, like, kind of badge hungry right now, and I want to just go to another one right now. Like, <laughs> I think she's on a little bit of, like, a... Little power trip. She's on a badge backlog. <laughs> that felt so right.
Well, well, shoot, I was hoping that. <laughs> Put it at the end. Don't ever lose that. Whatever just happened to your voice, don't ever lose that. <laughs> okay, your turn. <laughs> Are you looking for high-quality, family-friendly podcasts? Shows that are safe for younger or more sensitive listeners. Podicon Go is a reliable corner of the internet for the kind of podcast that everyone can enjoy. From educational programs to conversational topics and incredible storytelling and role-playing shows in a variety of styles, themes, and age groups. Podicon Go is a group of independent podcast creators dedicated to creating high-quality programs that provide family fun for everyone. Visit podicongo.com for an ever-growing lineup of shows, complete with descriptions and ways you can listen. Connect with the Podicon Go family-friendly podcast network on Facebook and Twitter. P-O-D-I-C-O-N Go. It's podcast fun for everyone. Podicon Go. Thank you for listening to Postcard from Poor on Quest Company Jr.